Our scripture today comes from Mark, chapter 15, 21 through 47. A certain man from Serene, Simon the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Galatia, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with mirth, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see which each would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurtled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you are going to destroy the temple and build it, build it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him amongst themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe those crucified with him also heaped insults on him at the sixth hour of darkness came over the, the whole land until the ninth hour and the ninth hour Jesus cried out in a, light, in a loud voice Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabatha, Sabatha Hamai which means my God why have you forsaken me when some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn from t torn in two from the top to the bottom and when the centurion who had stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry saw how he died and he said surely this is the man this man was the son of God some women were watching from a distance among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger of Joseph and Solomon in Galilee these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him from Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day. It was the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Armatha, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, was boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he had learned from the centurion that it, was, it, that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a big stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. The Romans knew a lot. They knew how to make concrete set underwater. Um, I have a brother-in-law who's in concrete. They know how to set concrete underwater nowadays, but the Romans 2,000 years ago know how to do it. The Romans knew how to conquer. <laughs> they knew how to kill. They knew how to fight. They knew how to do a lot of things. Today we see a Roman knowing who Jesus is. Now, as we've gone through the book of Mark, and we've been in Mark for, I don't know, six months now, I guess, um, 
we have seen lots of people who don't know Sikkim. Uh, Peter, and James, John, all of the disciples didn't know much of anything. You know, and they still were getting it wrong. You know, even at the very end, they didn't know to stay awake. Well, they should have been praying. They just fell asleep. Uh, they didn't know who Jesus Christ was. They didn't know that the hour had come. They didn't know that, that Jesus was about to die for their sins. Uh, they didn't know. But this Roman here that we read about in chapter 15 acknowledges to the world that this is the Son of God. And that is what... Mark has been driving to this entire time. He has been asking us uh, to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in our life. Crucifixion served two purposes in the lives of the Romans. One, it was a deterrent uh, to the criminal. Well, it was, a, it was a, to punish the criminal. And the other was, it was a deterrent to the society at large. They would crucify people out in the most public places that they could find so that those people Everybody else would know, don't mess with the Romans. Don't mess with us. We will crucify you. You should just back up and obey what we tell you to do. And so they crucified Jesus in a public place. They went to Golgotha. They made Jesus carry the cross beam. And we don't know why Jesus wasn't able to finish this task, but we know that he started carrying this beam. The way the Romans did it, you know, normally when we see uh, a picture of Jesus on the way to the cross and he's carrying his cross, we have both the upright and the cross beam that he's carrying. But we know from history that that really wasn't how it happened. They would just carry that one piece of plank that they would get nailed to or they would get tied to and the other part was already there, set up in the ground. And then they would hoist that person up there and set him on that, on, uh, on that upright that they had. So Jesus was supposed to carry his cross, and we don't know why he couldn't. I think it's pretty obvious. He uh, had lost a lot of blood. He had been up. He was not only uh, physically tormented, but he was spiritually and emotionally uh, shredded as well. He just could not go on. And so we find about Simon of Cyrene. One of the paradoxes of the gospel is that a person who could not carry his own cross to be executed allows us to carry ours. He gives us that power. This is really a tremendous statement. And maybe it, he's also telling us that we don't even carry ours, he carries ours for us. He couldn't carry his, we can't carry ours. And we have lots of crosses to bear. All manner of them, physical and emotional and social, spiritual crosses that we are supposed to bear. And Jesus carries them for us. He asks us to turn our crosses over to him, and he carries them along. Simon is passing by. Now, I point out this word passing by because Mark has used this word very carefully to talk about discipleship. Jesus would pass by and call people into discipleship. Jesus calls Simon into discipleship. We are called into discipleship. We're going through this world. We're passing by our jobs. We're passing by the school. We're passing by in our families. We're passing by in life. And Jesus stops and says, follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. And he uses the same word when he talks about Simon passing by. Now, Mark identifies this man. I don't know, I don't think he knew them uh, at this point. I think he knew him after this point. I think what happened was, is that Simon learned that 